Hi and welcome to my playhouse and in my last video server related video I was talking about raid and different raid numbers and what they were good for so today I just wanted to share with you how I could set up a raid system on a server and in my thoughts I would be using this server as a standalone Windows server it could be a SQL database server or something like that and down here behind me I have can we see that this one no it's not in view hmm. I have this server and it's an IBM x3650 model 3 so let's go inside and see what this server has I do believe it has a RAID controller but I haven't really opened it up yet here is the inside of the server and well it seems to come fully loaded with lots of RAM and two CPUs and over here is the RAID controller and this one is a yay 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 M5050 uh, I believe it's called with the battery and the extra RAM thing on top here um, and that's the RAID controller for this server and it has connections to the backplane of the hard drives over here so that should all be good but it has a hardware RAID controller and that goes down into the motherboard on this um, PCI Express card over here it's an X8 that is it's a special one that is meant for the RAID controller of the server you can put in other RAID controllers over here but this one is meant for it so in this server there is already a couple of hard drives and these are 146 gigabyte drives the server has well it has eight bays from 0 to 7 and that's how much this RAID controller can handle it has two more you could expand this and have more drives in it you need a back planes for these and you need another disk controller to handle those two as well but let's put in some more disks I do believe that we might have just have some laying around so we're gonna get rid of these oh that's not that that's the one and put in some more drives these are also 146 gigabyte drives they have numbers on it doesn't matter have some more here some of these might not be working but well, then I'll find that out well, make sure that these are 146 yeah 146 gigabytes so I'll power on the server the server is now powered on and it's ready to be turned on so we're gonna do that So it's powering up. Over here I've ready the screen. And we will try and go into the BIOS of this server. It's running a UEFI BIOS. And yes, it's a RAID controller M5015. Pretty old firmware, I guess. I haven't upgraded this since 2011, but I'll guess that it works just as fine. You can now press Control H to go into the handling of this. I really wanted to go into the BIOS. Hope I get that option. Some there, there it comes. Here, F1 for setup. BIOS. On this UEFI thing, we have the option of going in and configuring our um, rate controller in here apparently not <laughs> okay that didn't work okay doing boot we get the option of uh, loading the configuration utilities if importing foreign configurations and um, we'll get the option right here to press ctrl H to go into the configuration of this hopefully let's see what happens tells me something about the server we get uh, very curious to where this brings me here we are but apparently the mouse is well it's not on my side 
I'll try and connect an external mouse. Well, connecting an external mouse worked a lot better. And I even found a little mouse pad for it over here. So we're gonna continue. And we will probably see a lot of foreign configurations. There are four foreign configuration found, one to import. Well, we don't really want that, so we will select one by one and just clear them. Clear, yes. So here we get an overview of what we got. And we need to clear some more of these. And we'll try the configuration. We'll clear some configurations, right? Next. Yes, we want to clear something. So now we got some more disks. We have one, zero, one, two, three, four are cleared. And we have foreign configuration five, six, and seven. So selecting a foreign configuration and let's see what we can do. We can make it a global hotspot, we can make it a unconfigured bad, we can locate it, we can prepare move removal. Mm. It's not exactly what I want. So I think we'll go out and go in again. These uh, top five drives, they're ready to go, but I should probably have cleared all the configurations. So let's leave the application ready for reboot yes we'll do that please reboot oh we have to we will go in again control h server has two processors 128 gigabytes of ram nice and we are back in the controller we have some old firmware right there might look into updating that all configurations and clear let's see if that helps me yes boom, boom. it still sees some unconfigured good down here hmm but at least they're not foreign configurations anymore i have no idea why they are yellow that's uh, kind of hard maybe they are still being prepared but let's go into the configuration wizard and see what we can see here now we want to add some configuration uh, actually we want a new configuration clear the existing yes next yep and we want some manual configuration yes redundancy if possible yes next and what I want to do here is I want to take two drives for the C drive where Windows is going to be running from so I'm going to take this one, add to array, that one, add to array, and that one, it seems to, um, if, I, if I select the back plane up here, which it does automatically every time, it doesn't work, so I have to I have to unmark that and mark this one and I can do that. So now we have two disks over here. We're gonna accept this disk group and we're gonna go next. And here we have the options. Now we have the options of RAID 0 and RAID 1 because we have two disks. So I'm gonna mark that there. Add to span, it goes over here. Uh, next and here we can configure uh, how we want to set this up how um, what raid level now we have raid 1 and raid 0 we have striped size um, now we can set I'm just gonna keep it at the at the standard one we have read policy normal ahead so okay we have the write policy which is uh, right back while BBU and that has something to do with the battery uh, as default it's set to the to the best one I think so we're gonna keep it uh, on that one we can totally bypass the battery by choosing right through and we can um, select always right back uh, probably the slowest one but as long as the battery is good it's good to have the 
BBU. Correct, enable, blah, 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 blah. And we're gonna be using all the 135 gigabytes to uh, host our Windows. So we're just gonna update size and the size goes over here and we can accept that. I can accept that. Cool, yes. Next. And accept. And do you wanna save? Yes. And you are aware that the, both disks will be initialized or something like that. Yes, I do know that. And it does that really quick. There we are. It's done with that. So now we can go home and see our virtual drive up here. 135 gigabytes and that contains of these two drives. Now we have these drives that um, I want to see if I can configure why it's yellow. I still have no idea. Configuration wizard. Add configuration we choose now. Otherwise it will delete the one we just made. And I'm going to be making a manual one. Yes. And I can select. I don't know if I can select more than one. I can. That's neat. And we'll add that to this group number one. Let's see if that happened. That happened. So now we have we have those disks down here. Awesome. We're gonna accept that. We're gonna go next. Oh, I made an I made an error. Go back. Um, I actually don't want all drives in that disk group. I actually want one for a hot spare and I'll take the very last one and reclaim that so now it should go back over here uh, just make sure that number seven is no longer there it's still there reclaim oh it's there reclaim Still not. It doesn't really like that. It keeps saying that that I have selected a disk group, trying very hard not to. Okay, we'll cancel that, and we'll do it again. Add configuration next. Redundancy if possible next. Okay, and this time we'll deselect that one and just select those and put those in this group number one on that one add to array that looks about right accept next so now we have the options let's just see that Add to span. And next. Now we get the options of choosing a RAID 5. This RAID controller you need to purchase uh, an add on. It's a little dunkle thing that you put on the RAID controller and then it will be compatible with RAID 6. So this is extra on this RAID controller, uh, which is really odd because this is not a cheap RAID controller. So we're gonna select RAID 5 and we're gonna select all this default and we're gonna update the size and we now get 543 gigabytes of data in our RAID 5 and select next. Oh, create at least, okay. Accept, do you, yes. Okay, so now I have a disk group zero. And a disk group one. Okay, let's see what it says about this. Uh, accept. Yes. It's thinking about this. Okay. Um, all data will be lost. Yes. Um, and we already have a drive here that has failed. That's unfortunate. Oh, that's not good. We have a and if we watch down here 
we have a bad drive. Number three here is not good, so I have to see if I have an, a replacement for that. I have found a replacement for that, so let's let's exchange that drive. That's really unfortunate. That was supposed to be a good drive. There we are, and it's it's checking the drive. Hopefully in just a second or two, yeah, it's um, investigating that drive. Now it's it's done. It's actually working right now. Um, I had to take out some discs in the server beneath that because um, I was running out of discs that would work up here. I have all the hard drives that I've tried to get up and running. This is where video um, cheats a little bit because, well, I think I've been away for three hours getting this up and running. But here it is. I have the, the first drive, the C drive up here containing this one virtual drive containing these two disks. I have the virtual D drive, but here is just called drive one. That contains of these five discs and I have a single mm, unconfigured good so we're gonna go pick that one and down here it's absolutely impossible to see that but I think if I flip the screen you can actually see the text here and so can I and here I can make a global hot spare and here I can make a dedicated hot spare so I want to make a global hot spare and it's pretty easy, you just press that one and press go and you create a global hot spare. Home. And it's gotten some pink color down there. Uh, the two yellow ones, I think this is because these hard drives are kind of dutchy, they're not very good. I have been mingling a lot around with the hard drives, so right now I have these two and they're not super conditioned or anything so that's what the system is telling me i have been going in here where it tells me that previous fill count that that could be it three let's go see one of the green ones let's take number five yeah previous fill count zero so that's probably why they are yellow they have failed before. Let's see the other one. Previous fail count one. So they have failed once before, so they are marked yellow. I was just gonna show this, so we're not gonna do anything about it. They are not. They're not that good. Those drives. So what would happen now is if one of these drives, all these drives, fail, this hot spare, global hot spare. Uh, yeah, it says global hot pair right here will take the role of one of these other disks If I go ahead and boot the system now, I would be able to install any windows on the C drive and have my data on the D drive and those two would be Separate that's um, that's a way to do this so that you can have a, a Separate C drive from a D drive and not mingle it uh, together it costs a little bit extra discs, but you get a lot of good security. Thank you for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. Join me over at Google Plus where I post pictures of what I'm up to. Have a nice day. Bye bye.